Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to show you how to create this monogram hand engraving look for your jewelry cat design with the Rhino 3D software. Are you ready? Let's get started. In this tutorial, we're going to mimic the hand engraver for any of the text monogram on the top of a ring. The most important part is the text itself and how do we get this type of a shape over here. So that's starting from the scratch. In the Rhino, if you're coming into the text, you will have this text box. There's a lot of the font that you can choose. And for example, if we choose this whatever black, uh, there's a Cooper black, which is going to give you really heavy text. And then we're just going to have a curve. And when you have a curve coming out, this is what you're working for. You can extrude it straight for any of the thickness. And let's say you have a piece of the plate underneath it. And then you can have this one. Then you can simply just pull in different this one out of those three. Right. And it will give you a text is like recess and you can use this type of a text too. But this is not what we're looking for in the Rhino text. You are going to find something. It's called single line font SLF. And in the Rhino, there's only one uh, with the single line. And what is the difference on this one is you will get just the line work in this line work. Then you can do a lot of things. For example, you can just pipe it for whatever thickness that you want, and then you will get the text like this, right? So what we are looking for is the single line text, but there's only one font uh, in the Rhino. Now you can go online, just type a single line font, and you can find things that you like. However, they all cost some money. And for this demonstration, I want to show you something that what you can modify from it. Find the text that you like. Most of the time, there will be script. And I don't know if you have this one. Um, I may download this one before. It's called Edward Script Text. And if you don't have it, you should be able to find it online for myfont.com. I think I got it there. Or you can use any type of a script uh, text in Rhino. Now, once you get this one, you're going to get something really complicated like this. And this is to look like our hand engraving uh, text. I'm just going to use in P as an example. This is the one that we need to have single line only. So with this one, I'm going to explode it. And I simply just going to have this one, this one, and maybe this text. I'm going to highlight them, this text this part over here and this will be the part that i'm going to extract it from and double make sure if that is looking correct for you now for us we don't we don't want it to have uh something like curve back and things like that and this might be getting too close so we kind of need to work around with this first of all we don't need the back coming back like this unless that's part of your design. So I'm going to delete a bunch of them over here and to get something like this. Uh, this part right here, that's okay. This part right here, we don't actually need it to curve back. So we'll get something like this. We don't need this one curve back that will cause the problem when we try to sweep. So I'm going to get rid of things like that. Notice that they're coming into certain kink there, but that's okay. We're going to fix it. We might also want to move the part that's going to moving this point from here to here. And then so that will be connected. Once it connected, let's go ahead to join it. This one to either you wanted to move the point or you want to use the command for blend. And then you want to blend this end to this end. That will work too, if whichever way that you think work for you. Okay, so now we have it disconnected. I'm going to join. This is connected uh, by join. And then with this, now we have two curves. That will make sure if this is what you want and we need to, because this has connected by multiple curve together. So we want to rebuild this curve. And then when we rebuild it, uh, we're going to make it the last point as possible without having a lot of a deviation. As you can see, now we have a 36 point. And then if they turn it into 20 point, you're going to have this one become really smooth, right? I, 
try to use last point. I see let's try 12. It's okay, that's not changing too much and we're gonna click okay. All right, we're gonna have this curve too that we are going to rebuild. And with this one, 12 is too much of a difference. You can see this changing way too much. Maybe I wanna bump it up to the 18 because it's a longer line and I wanna click okay. After you do that, you may want to adjust the curve and see how you would like it to be at the end, All right? So we're gonna move in this one up, something like this, and see which one will for you if you want to moving this one up or not. Okay, so now we have this curve that we're going to work with. I'm going to delete this one here. This will be the single line that we are working with. All right, so what we are going to do right now is we need to creating the cut. Now in most of the engraving which I, that I learned from a jeweler is you will have this a uh, V-point graver to do the monogram. A V-point graver does come with the different angle. The most one to use is 90 degree, and then you got 75 up to 120 degree, depends on what you want. So I'm gonna use the 90 degree as an example right here to creating our cutting tool. First of all, gonna coming into the top view, and I'm going to use the square, but starting from the center, and I'm going to coming over here, and coming into my front view and deciding how big of the graver it's going to be. Once I have this graver, first of all, I'm going to rotate it 45 degree with the, my gumball, and then so it will be 90 degree cut into the metal. And one key things for the sweep is you want this cross section, it's 90 degree or at least something like that. You can see that green arrow is aligned with my rail and so to do something like this. This will help it to flow it better. Okay, if this cut is too big, go ahead to uh, scale it down. And let's do a test and see how that goes. We are going to use the command for sweep one rail. You got this rail. You got the cross section only one here. If you just click something like this, this is what you are going to get. It is the uniform cut all the way from the beginning to this point on your cross section. But we don't want that. We want to come in really pointed at the taper and then going bigger over here. So let's go ahead to do one more time. This time we're going to use the same command, sweep one rail. And then you are going to pick up this rail. And then you're going to starting with the point. You can see there's a point option right here. You want to click on the point and then you want to select this cross section and you're going to click on the point one more time. And then you will get something like this. Once you click OK, you're going to get something like this, like really pointed. It's like you're starting your graver on the really pointed and you cut it deeper coming down here and getting to really point right there. All right, so this is the shape that we get. Double check on my right, the property showing it's a closed solid poly surface. That's because it's coming into the point. All right, now the next things we're gonna do the same thing. Notice that this one is cutting inside of the shape. If that is okay to you, that will be fine. If not, you might want to move in this point. I will leave it that to you. But what I wanted to do is coming into the top view and I want to make a copy by move the gumball and hit the all key. Once you hit the all key, again, you need to make sure it's 90 degree. This is 90 degree toward to the rail that you are going to sweep. It will look nicer, right? Now we're going to do the same trick on this one. Let's go ahead to use the sweep one rail. This is the rail. This is the starting with the point on this point coming into here, this, and then ending with the point again over here and see if that worked well to you. Now, let's take a look on this. If you feel like this is working for you, that's fine. I do find out the kink need to modify. And because this is a longer curve or longer rail, it doesn't look right here. Maybe I want to change in the thickness. Maybe I wanted to have a thickness right there. So I'm going to delete this one and I want to make sure that this one looks smoother. So I'm going to use the smooth man and then you can adjust the smoothness uh, to change this one. The beginning, the end point position won't change, 
but it will change big or smaller and to make it smoother at the same time right there all right so if that looks smoother to you what you wanted to do is creating another cross section so i'm going to have something over here and then make them smaller a lot more smaller and then again i want to move them close to the center and then i want to rotate it 90 degree here so that means when i start it it's not starting from a point it's starting from about this size and again i'm going to move this one not moving making a copy hit the all key again with the gumball and i'm going to move it to here and rotate it close to this angle all right so let me hiding this one so it's easier for you to see right here this is what we have here so we have three cross section and this is our rail let's try sweep one rail and this is the rail this cross section one two and three and hit enter then this is what we get there now if you take a look on this this is actually a poly surface beginning and the end it is not closed so we are going to use the cap command and we're going to close this all right let's go ahead to turn it on this one and double make sure this is what you want now if i have any of the object in the back so let's say I'm going to have the plate in the back and of course it could be a ring, it could be anything else. Uh, and then this is the thickness and that's what we have there. All we need to do is to boolean difference and then this one will be difference out uh, this one and this one. Now if you take a look on my boolean difference right here, it say boolean difference fell. That is because I have this aligned with the seam with all of this shape. All I need to do is moving my color, moving up just a little bit. How much? Roughly about 0 0.01. That you barely can tell what is the difference. And I also have a lot of uh, video talking about why the bowling doesn't work. I will put it on the right top for the video and it is all in my Q&A playlist. So let's try to pull in difference one more time. This one will be difference out this one and this one. And let's take a look on the render view. So it will have the cut into the plate or any of the design that you have. I hope you enjoy the video. I just launching a brand new course for a signal ring design. That is a perfect for hang engraving look on top of it. This course starting from very basic for a ring structure into a championship ring. I talk about the stone setting, also including the pave setting, and all the detail work for a signal ring. This brand new course is just launching, and don't miss the new course launching discount. The link is in the description below. Hope to see you in the course. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next.